Mullins into center field. This should do it. Margot going back. It does not matter. Adley Rutschman will score. And the Orioles seal their fate with a walk-off win. A clincher, a walk-off. Control of the American League East. Now that's not bad for a Sunday. That's how you bounce back. You simply could not have imagined this. Yeah. All right. Here we go! Here we go now, and the Orioles, what a story. I am so impressed with their win last night, I can't tell you. Ninth inning against Houston, they needed the game in the worst way after that unbelievable weekend and the last two games against Tampa, and they showed resourcefulness, and of course, Mullins hits the 3-1 homer. Mike Elias put a lot of this team together, does a great job, and it's good to have him with us. Mike, pleasure, nice to chat. How are you today, okay? Hey, I'm doing well, Chris, how are you? Always a pleasure. 87, let's start with the, the great stat. 87 consecutive series have not been swept. Wow, that's good. Give me a little rundown there first. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I do not know what to make of that. Um, it's it's interesting. Um, uh, you know, the, I, I would, care, you know, we've got a really good team. I think I've been watching baseball my whole life. Uh, the thing that sticks out to me with this team is it is uh, very consistent. Um, we haven't had uh, huge hot or cold streaks. Um, the team kind of snaps back into place quickly. And, you know, that stat seems like, you know, the biggest symptom of that. It's a, it's a real steady group. It sure is. And to give the manager credit for that, he's a steady force himself. Uh, you know, he's consistent. He doesn't get too high or too low. You brought him in. A great hire. Uh, let's throw him some bouquets for a minute. Brendan Hyde, go ahead. Yeah, it's pretty pretty self-evident at this point, but thank you. I mean, he, he uh, you know, we brought him in at the uh, beginning of the rebuild. Um, I, I thought that he had the uh, appropriate uh, resume in player development. He, he has done basically everything you can do in player development, um, playing, coaching, um, whatever, up and down the minor leagues, front office. Um, and I knew that the, the Baltimore rebuild was going to be um, you know, somewhat arduous in the first few years. And, you know, you would need somebody to have perspective to withstand that. Um, and I, I like the way he sees the game and thinks about the game. And, um, you know, it's turned out uh, to be uh, a perfect fit. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased for him, but also proud um, that we are one of the few teams that I can tell that have um, kind of had the same manager at the beginning of a massive rebuild and then also – into the competitive stage. So um, he's, uh, he deserves all the credit in the world. Yeah, I asked you that last time, you know, because a lot of, ma a lot of teams bring the manager in just to, you know, handle the losing and the young players. And then when they're ready to win, Renneria with the Cubs is a perfect example. Uh, when they're ready to win, they change managers and the Cubs got Madden. And, of course, Hyde came from Madden and you stuck with him. So that's, that's a good one there. All right, uh, how about last night? I mean, you figure maybe a little flat. Geez, ever going to lose a game? Give them one last night in Houston. Had to travel there, no day off. And the Astros are playing for a season. And they're down, you guys are down in the ninth inning, and Mullins hits a 3-1 homer. Ah, that is a tremendous gut check against that Astro team. How about that for a sec? Let me hear. Yeah, very wild game. Um, I, I think that the, our team, um, uh, to its credit, kind of finds ways to win. And, you know, we did our best to give that game away a couple of times and, um, you know, just came back through a lot of lead changes. Um, this has been a, a really challenging stretch because the Rays – and the Astros are two of the uh, tougher teams in all of baseball to play. Um, and, you know, that Astros lineup is really scary. Minute Maid Park gives you some really weird baseball games sometimes. And last night was an example. I can't believe we won, um, but that's this group. And, uh, you know, I think one of the benefits of having a young roster, I guess, is, um, you know, if they have a little party the night before, they, they bounce back pretty, pretty quickly from that. All right, Rodriguez has been a much different pitcher since being sent down earlier in the year. He's pitched really well. The other night he was great. He beat Glasnow eight innings. What's the difference? Why all of a sudden have we seen the Glasnow, the high prospect, in this second recall here? Let me hear the rundown on that. Go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, Grayson Rodriguez has been uh, the number one pitching prospect in our organization, also in baseball, for a couple of years. Um, I have nothing negative to say about him. From a scouting standpoint, he basically checks all the boxes um, of a frontline starter. 
um, great draft pick uh, before I got here um, by the prior administration in 2018. Took him high. It was not a consensus pick, and uh, he's he's really uh, proven to have been the right move. Um, I will say this, uh, you know, we sent him down the, he, he didn't look right in spring training and he didn't look right in the first part of the season. And we sent him back to AAA for more seasoning. Um, our pitching department, uh, Chris Holt, the major league pitching coach who kind of runs our whole pitching program and Justin Ramsey, our AAA pitching coach. I, I don't know what they did exactly, but I've never seen a guy uh, make more adjustments in such a short amount of time. He was only down for, you know, six or seven starts in AAA um, he came back up. His delivery looked different. His command was back, um, and he's been off and running since then. Um, the kid's got a great head on his shoulders, and he clearly did a lot of work in AAA, and he did the right work, and um, he's a horse right now. 100%. All right, now, are you a little worried? You don't know until you get into the mix. Uh, you know, deep end of the pool, postseason, you're going to have six days if you win the division. Are you going to give me this thing, Chris? We haven't won anything yet. But let's say you do. You win. You got the tiebreaker. You're three up on a loss column about 10 days to go. Uh, if you get into a situation where you have the week off, deep end of the pool, how do you think your young team is going to handle that? Let me hear. Um, I, I, look, we're gunning for the division. Um, I think it's huge for us on a number of levels. Um, you know, we want that. We want the uh, buy. Um, I think we, anyone could use a break. Uh, th this team is is tired. Um, you know, we've got a lot of pitchers that have done a lot of pitching, and the position players are banged up. Other teams are the same way, but um, I think we would very much welcome that uh, reset. So we're going to be uh, keeping our foot on the gas pedal here the rest of the regular season to try to fend off Tampa. All right, so there you go. So the week, you're not worried. You could use a little blow. If you do win the division, you'll feel a little better about that. Going to win 100 games, too, from that. Are you a year or two ahead of uh, schedule, Mike? Would you ever in your wildest dreams, if I spoke to you, you know, Vegas had you at 76 and a half over under in a regular season, which I thought was crazy anyway. Last year, you won 83 games. 76 and a half. So in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that you'd be a 100 win team in 2023? In spring training. You know, I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think about that stuff. I've never talked timelines. Um, I've lived this before um, with the Houston Astros and and um, that rebuild and Jeff Luno and the whole thing there. And, you know, you just kind of push hard in the correct direction over and over and over for years. The, the door just pops open one day, so to speak. And that's what happened last year. Um, I wasn't surprised by it, but I, I, you know, nobody's smart enough about baseball to know when and how that's going to happen exactly. Um, but this group, um, it's very uh, high character. Uh, they mesh well together. Um, the roster is very dynamic and um, and interactive and uh, flexible. And I think that um, you know the reason that we're well, there's a lot of reasons that we're outpacing our projections this year. Um, but that's a big part of it. Um, the, t the team really works well together and likes one another. And, um, and it, 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 there's a lot of chemistry. And, of course, your two little moves you made, well, three, I'll count Flaherty, but, you know, Gibson's done a nice job for you. He's won a lot of ball games. Adam Frazier's gotten big hits. You did get a little criticized not making a run at Verlander. All right, you get Flaherty, who, as it turns out, you're okay there. You know, a lot of people wondered how much the Orioles would spend. You made a couple of moves last year, and it's worked out. And Flaherty hasn't been great. But again, I haven't really missed him because of the, I haven't, Verlander, for instance, or a guy like that, because you're still going to win 100 ball games. So the Orioles did a nice job of not going overboard maybe at the deadline and overboard last winter, Mike. Let me hear your thoughts with that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, look, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, uh, the, the playoffs are coming. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, this, this, um, this stuff is hard. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't have control over everything. Um, you can't just push a button and, and acquire whoever you want. Um, we do our job and we, we, we try to um, do things. You know, nobody, nobody's going to hear about it or talk about it when it doesn't happen. Um, and that's all part of it. Um, but, you know, we, we, we are where we are using the, um, the process and the methods that we do. You can't, you can't do everything. Um, the future is important, too. And it's my job to strike that balance and try to get the most out of this year without 
um, you know, totally destroying our, our future or, or over or overly uh, negatively impacting our future. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it, it plays out. I think, you know, ultimately the front office gets judged on results, whether that's fair or not, over a several year span. And, um, you know, we got we got a ways to go. This group's just getting started and we're very mindful of that. So um, I am very proud of what the free agent group that we brought in has done. You mentioned a few of those guys. Um, it's been perfect in terms of their fits and contributions with the young core. And, um, you know, we'll see where this goes here the next month. Uh, quickly on Batista, uh, uh, you know, uh, I have a funny feeling you try it here and hopefully you get something out of him. And then down the road, if you have to deal with a surgery, you will. Uh, we are not going to rule Batista out in the postseason at the moment. Is that correct? What's up with him? Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard for me to get overly detailed about it uh, beyond what's what's uh, evident. You know, he's 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 throwing right now. Um, you know, he's a wonderful talent. Uh, we miss the heck out of him. And, um, you know, he, he's. He's doing his best right now to, to throw. Um, it is early. Um, it's a day by day thing. Um, it, it, you know, it's really uh, rough for us to lose uh, an, an extremely impactful relief pitcher like that where we did. He's a big reason why we're at where we're at. Um, you know, uh, he's a great kid. And I, I, I hope, um, I hope, you know, we're able to get him back on the field. Um, for 2023, just because of how much that would mean to him, him and the team. But, um, you know, this is something that's uh, in, in its infancy and is a day by day thing. And we're doing our best. Good job there with Batista. We shall see down the road. Good job, Mike. Congratulations. We'll keep in touch. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Yeah, thanks, Chris.